Hey there guys, welcome back to What Cheers. I'm Nick as always. And yes, it's that time again. It's time for another <laughs> probably mind-blowing uh, treehouse beer. This is a brand new one that just came out called Pacer. Uh, it's a pale ale coming in at 5.8%. And uh, before I even get started, I wanted to say thank you so much to my new friend, Paul, who is part of the Treehouse gang on Facebook and uh, just a wonderful community on there um, for helping me out, getting me this growler since I couldn't get it. And um, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, so on to the beer, guys. This is another beer brewed by the amazing uh, assistant brewer, Brennan Prindeville. Uh, previously, I reviewed the Forerunner Pale Ale, which he did, which was Citra and Mosaic. Holy shit. That beer, I mean, just mind-blowingly good. And so th I guess this is his second, technically, this is his second Pale Ale that he's done. Um, and this is a Pacer, as I said. Uh, so, yeah, what is the beer, guys? Well, I have a cheat sheet here because I can't remember all the hops. Um, it's 5.8%, as I said. And it says it's using a bounty of classic American hops. Um, in a way, it's a throwback American pale ale because it's using Centennial, Chinook, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Columbus. So it's going to be uh, maybe on the more piney, dank side. We shall see. With Treehouse, you never know. You're usually expecting just ridiculous levels of juiciness, but... Um, who knows? All bets are off when those guys get the hops in their hands, um, the way they, the way they, their process works or whatever. So, super excited to review this one uh, again. This was, I think, brewed on the five barrel system, um, another one off batch, uh, as far as I know. And yeah, guys, as I said, the Forerunner I just reviewed was probably the best pale ale I've ever had from Treehouse. Um, so I'm really anxious to see how this one stacks up. Uh, yeah, let's get it cracked open, guys. I've had it out of the fridge for about a half hour right now. Perfect temperature to get right into it. And at time of reviewing, it is, this was filled a week ago, a week ago today. Um, so yeah, guys, let's get the pacer cracked open. Uh, yeah, let's see what this beer is all about. All right, got the pacer poured out and the head is dissipating quickly, so I wanna get into this. I uh, probably could have poured it more aggressively, but it is what it is. Uh, about a two finger head basically a one finger head now, but uh, just really, really gorgeous looking guys. I know you can see that. Um, yeah, it's a slightly off white head. You can see that there's gonna be tons of glass lacing. Um, just a very light kind of fluffy whipped cream head as I always say about these beers, but it's totally true. Um, yeah, onto the color, let's get to the important stuff. Holy shit, this is dark. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Brendan, what did you do? This beer is freaking dark, man. Oh my God. It's it's like this, like as thick as you could possibly imagine for a pale ale. This is a fucking pale ale, what? It's the deepest, darkest, golden honey color you could imagine. I mean, it looks black in the middle, almost. Like that's how dark it looks. Sort of lighter golden orange, almost amber color on the, on the fringe of the glass but totally dark towards the middle and just looks extreme, that classic extreme haze um, to treehouse beers. Um, yeah, just wow. Away from the light, it looks like orange juice, mango juice. I mean, it couldn't be thicker looking. Um, wow, you guys can see that, right? It's ridiculous. All right, let's go ahead and get an aroma on this. Cannot wait. There's a lot of hops in this beer. A lot of different hops. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm saying wow a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> they said it's a throwback kind of pale ale, and I'm definitely picking up a lot of those, like the Centennial, the Chinook, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of pine, a lot of sap, resiny character to it, um, some floral components, just like a lot of flowery kind of smell. There's a slight um, apricot, peach, peach skin kind of uh, juiciness to it. I really feel this too high though. I really can't swish it too much, but yeah, peach, apricot, and then a lot of pine, sap, resin, a little earthiness. 
I do have to say it has that, it has a treehouse signature thing going on. Um, there has some sort of juiciness, some sort of fruitiness to it that is just distinctly treehouse through and through. But um, yeah, it's it actually, it's still quite chill, I'm surprised. But um, it's actually warming up literally like by the second here. And I can smell it coming out more and more. I can already tell it's gonna be juicy though. Cheers guys, let's get a sip. God. Oh my God, it's so good. Okay. I love you, Treehouse. I love you guys. <laughs> thank, thank you, Nate. Thank you, Brennan. Thank you, everyone at Treehouse. I just love you guys. Oh. See, what you don't pick up in the aroma is the, like, the Treehouse juiciness that you're going to get. Um, it's just there in spades. I mean, even though it has like a piney resinous kind of thing, a little earthy, it's still just that treehouse juicy fruit flavor. I mean, actually reminds me of Julius. Um, somewhere in between, I think like Julius and Sap. Maybe a touch of green in there as well. I'll tell you this right now. This does not drink like a fucking pale ale. <laughs> it's absolutely out of the question that this drinks like a pale ale. This is like at least an IPA, if not a double IPA from these guys. I don't know how they do this. I know I said this about the Forerunner. Um, maybe because they're brewing these one-offs on the five barrel system and they're much smaller batch that they can kind of go overboard with using the ingredients um, to make it just that much more epic because this just is so saturated with stuff. It's so hop saturated. It's just thick. It's just juicy. It's hoppy. It's clean. It's smooth. I mean, it's ridiculous. Super, super juicy up front has the mouthfeel, I mean, I'm not kidding guys, it has the mouthfeel and the whole feel of the beer. I would say, yeah, an IPA. I would say it's an IPA, I wouldn't go double IPA, but no way does this drink like a pale ale. It actually does remind me of a mix between Julius and Green a little bit, with a little bit of sap. It's super juicy, super pineapple juice, orange juice, mango, um, just tropical citrus. Um, Ruby red grapefruit, like sugar coated grapefruit biting into that, that kind of thing. Mouthfeel is just silk, velvet, smooth, creamy, ridiculous for a 5.8% pale ale. It's, it's got to be like the best mouthfeel in the world. It finishes dry. It finishes almost like, it finishes super dry, but your mouth is coated, coated with the flavors of orange, orange rind, grapefruit. Oh, wow. It's sticky a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of that pine sap resin kind of character, but honestly, it's not that dank. I know Columbus is in this as well, I think. Um, not even picking up too much Columbus in this beer. I'm not sure exactly what hop or hops are dominating, but this is surprising me. I expected this to be much more of a piney, um, West Coast kind of tasting, you know, hot bomb. Um, and it's really got, it's like, you know, it's a treehouse take on it. So it's just a juice bomb. And then that West Coast kind of, uh, as they said, throwback hops as a background. It's not up in the forefront or it's just the way they use the hops. It's just, it's just the process that they use the hops. They're extracting them in totally different ways. I don't know anything about that, but clearly they're doing something that no, not many breweries in the world are doing because it's Treehouse Brewing Company and they, they just know what the fuck they're doing. I, it really just tastes like juice, guys, again. Juice with like a, a twinge of a piney, yeah, piney like bite to it. But that is it. There's no like dank, earthy, you know, that kind of thing going on. It's dry, 
with, I mean, there's basically no bitterness. It's just hop bite on your tongue. There's no bitterness to this beer. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. As of right now, I don't know which one I'd like better between the Forerunner and this, but I think the Forerunner probably just because it was with Citra and Mosaic, forget about it. But this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna sip on this for another few minutes. It actually is almost at the perfect temp for me to wrap up the review. So I'll sip on it and come back with my final thoughts and score. But come on, guys, come on. It's gonna be a high one. It's gonna be a high score. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so for the Pacer Pale Ale from Treehouse, holy crap. Um, you know, let's go over the hop combination one more time, just so we're all on the same page here. This is Centennial. Chinook, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Columbus. If you read those, those hops in that combination from any other brewery, you wouldn't get excited. I, I don't care who you are, what you say, you just wouldn't get excited. You have that combination with Treehouse taking control, you get something completely Incredible, like, like really, really incredible. I, I was not, I was expecting this to be very West Coast. I was expecting this to be very dank and piney and earthy and citrusy, and I was gonna be fine with that. Um, I was expecting that. I said, okay, cool, that's good. Somehow, these guys, I, I don't know what they're doing. Brendan, you're a genius. Nate, you're a genius. You know, even through all that, it has the treehouse, like, signature on it. It has the aroma, it has the flavor, it has the juiciness, the citrusy component to it, the mouthfeel. I mean, it literally has everything. I can go through it all again, but I don't need to. It just has it all. From start to finish, has it all. Classic Treehouse beer, through and through. It tastes, and because they're brewing this on the five barrel system, the original um, brewing system, and it just tastes like when I first went to Treehouse years ago. And that's very, very special to me that I can still open up a growler, you know, three years later and have it be just like when I first went there. Um, yeah, that's just very, very special to me. I, I think this tastes like some of the first beers I ever had from them. And I felt the same way about the, for, the Forerunner. Um, so really any one-offs they do are just gonna be mind-blowing. I mean, not that their regular beers aren't amazing, but they're brewed now at much, much more uh, production. These just have a very special, they have a very special character to them and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But um, yeah, guys, even like all those hops combined, the dankness, there's no dankness, first of all, even the piney and like resinous character is, is so hidden. I don't know where they're getting, out of those hops, I don't know how they're getting that much juiciness, like juicy fruit, tropical fruit, citrus fruit. I don't know where they're getting that out of, which hops are giving them that. Just incredible stuff, guys. It tastes like juice. It tastes like hop juice. And it's so crushable, but it has a mouthfeel that's creamy. I don't know what they're doing over there. But guys, as far as a rating on this beer, uh, I looked at the Forerunner. I gave that a 99 plus, and then I changed it to 100. So for this one, I'm gonna go I wanna go 99 plus as well, but I'm gonna leave it at 99 plus. I'm absolutely 100% sure on that. I'm gonna leave it at 99 plus because I like the Forerunner just that much better because that one was just straight mosaic and citra and it was a revelation. Um, but absolutely phenomenal guys. If you had this, um, I, I know a lot of you guys actually do comment and you say that you've had these, which is awesome because I don't wanna be, I don't want to be reviewing everything that you guys can't get. It's kind of silly, um, but there are a lot of you now coming forward that are, are, you know, trying their beers. So let me know if you've had this uh, Pacer. I would love to know your thoughts on it and maybe even in comparison to some of the other pale ales. Uh, I do think this one is better than Lights On as well by a slight margin. It's just a little bit more complex, a little bit bigger. Definitely get lights on if you can, because they, they brew that kind of regularly now and release it in cans and all that stuff. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've had this Pacer or the Forerunner. 
and I hope they continue this series. I'm guessing that Brennan is 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 doing the, uh, his own thing now over there, and he's got free reign to brew whatever he wants. Um, so I'd be curious to know what you guys think, and. I want to give a huge thanks again to Paul. Thank you, Paul, for hooking me up with this dude. I really appreciate it. And remember, guys, to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next beer review. I'm going to go enjoy this because this is just, well, you already know. All right, guys. Cheers.